Ever since I was a little child, I always loved Advent. And not so much for, although Christmas is its own unique holiday, for the decorations and all that to do with Christmas, but for the quiet of Advent. And we had a tradition, and most people have the same tradition, in our home to arrange our nativity set under the tree. And we'd put the tree up like the first Sunday of Advent, no lights, but we'd put the manger up around it. And I don't know where it came from. It's probably in my Italian heritage. My parents accumulated a lot of little figures, sheep and shepherds and kings and so on. And I would play with them. I'd come home from school, do my homework, and lay down in front of the tree and play with them. I would have the shepherds walk and the kings walk and sometimes play some Advent music on the Victrola, remember those. And I, I just loved it. I just loved the quiet. And he, going back to school, it was Catholic school. We, of course, liked the Advent wreath. And the theme was purple. So it was a quiet. Even though outside was busy, it was a quiet, and I think it still is, a quiet period of reflection and of connection. But connection to whom? Today we commemorate the sprout that comes from the tree of Jesse. You heard that beautiful reading from Isaiah. Without really knowing what he was talking about, the people of Israel heard Jesse, excuse me, heard Isaiah, and they had to follow the metaphors right to the conclusion. And it was a day of hope that was being predicted to the people of Israel. And it starts out that a shoot, a little branch, would sprout from the stump of Jesse. The stump is the last piece of a tree left in the ground before the tree is broken, knocked down, cut. And out of that little stump, a sprig is flowering. Now, Isaiah is not talking about horticulture. He's not talking about gardening. He's talking about the history of the Jewish people and the longing for the flower of that tree. We don't know who it is when he wrote this, but he's tracing it that when this tree flowers, all will be at peace. God will return with justice. He will take care of the lands afflicted. He will make it so peaceful a period on his holy mountain, which is Jerusalem, that a wolf and a lamb can hang out, a baby can touch snakes, a, a little child could lead them, the cow and the bear will be neighbors. You know, this is a kind of mixed up zoo he's describing. But if you hear his intention that when God comes, all will be at peace, I want to challenge that God will only come when we are all at peace. That's not what this says. I just said that. But it's up to us who are members of the tree of Jesse. How are we members? The flower of that tree is Jesus. That's why this reading is so significant for us during Advent. The root of Jesse will be set up as a sign to the nations and all people will seek him. That's Jesus. Now this was written like hundreds of years before Jesus himself was born and came on the scene. So it was part of the predictions of the prophets and part of their advent, their period of waiting. We're in the second advent, the period of waiting for the return of the Messiah. But we have the rules of the Messiah right here. We have to be at peace with each other. Justice shall reign. We have to take care of the lands afflicted. This 21st century, that alone is a conflict because 
where we are geographically, but I think it's pretty regrettably ordinary throughout the country. There's so much affliction. So many are afflicted with poverty, with homelessness, to the point where we put a bridge between them or a wall between us and them. S socially, here in our own building, our own church. How often have you come into this church and been accosted by someone who is, I don't want to label him or her homeless, but questionable. I don't want to be a judge, but questionable. Carrying junk, carrying luggage, carrying weird things. And they're not coming here to pray. So the challenge is us today, 21st century, how do we reconcile our faith in God, our faith in Jesus, and I look at this window to my right, the Good Samaritan, with the gospel and the reality. My philosophy, and I've not mandated this, it's my suggestion, to never give to those who come across as needy and homeless from the streets. I don't do that because this is society. We're not in heaven now. And when you give to someone off the streets, it's an encouragement for them to stay on the streets. There are plenty of shelters. I don't live in one, so I don't know the quality of them. Plenty of soup kitchens, plenty of places provided by the town, the city, and the church, Catholic Charities, Caritas, and my encouragement to those who are unfortunate, go seek help there. And not accost people who come to church. Because the guilt that we experience turning away from someone who is sleeping on the street is amazing. But I, I want to challenge that guilt. We're preparing for Advent. We're preparing for Christ's return in glory. Yes, December 25th, of course, but the return of Christ in glory, where we have to treat people justly. And justly is not being patronizing. Treating them just to, justly is not giving in to their present state of mind or being. Justice might be to point the way for help. Soup kitchens, shelters, churches that, that have the facilities, like some of us around here. And the guilt that comes by us not doing that, I think, is the work of the devil. Really makes us feel guilty. Here you're coming to pray, here you're coming to talk to Jesus, and you don't care for this guy on the street. And again, the Good Samaritan. See, Jesus, in a sense, set us up when he told a story like the Good Samaritan. The society was different then. There's a lot more available to the poor in society. Our collections go for that. I mean, not only diocesan, but parish, and, and there's so many charities that are helping the poor. We're part of an institution, and I think using that institution to advance justice is appropriate. It doesn't mean treating them poorly. It means treating one another justly. To the point where we should be able to come into church or walk on the streets with a sense of peace. That's our goal, with a sense of peace where a baby can touch a snake and a bear can lay down with a, a lamb and, and a lion and, and another animal can walk together. That's the goal, peace and justice. But the journey to get there is long and arduous. We're members of the tree of Jesse. Jesus is our root, and at times we need to prune the tree, at times we need to fertilize it, but always focus on the flower, the bud of the tree of Jesse, 
Jesus. We're living in a very difficult, challenging time in our society and in the world, but keep our eyes on Jesus is important. Keeping our eyes on Jesus is necessary. Lighting the four candles of Advent historically reminds us what we're doing. Reflecting on the Holy Scriptures, again, what are we all about? Keeping our eyes on Advent as we prepare the way of the Lord.